Cubase 13 has been out for a few months now. There's a lot of amazing features part of this new version of Cubase, but there's also some features that lots of Cubase users don't know about or don't pay attention to. And these little features can improve your Cubase workflow. So let's jump right in. Now the first little feature or parameter I want to show you is straight in the mix console. Now if I use my mouse wheel, it's going to scroll up and down uh, within the racks section of the mix console, okay? In older versions of Cubase, we were able to change the amount of sand level and also scrolling up and down within the rack section of the uh, mix console, which can be confusing sometimes, you know, when you have your mouse straight on the channel and then it affects the settings of the channel instead of scrolling up and down. So for some, it wasn't that convenient. So that's probably why they removed that. However, you can turn this around if like me, you're used to the old way and you want to keep the ability to change the level using the mouse wheel straight from the mix console. So what you need to do is to go into Cubase preferences under project and mix console, you will see uh, the uh, scrolling disable mouse wheel for parameter change and uh, just uncheck that, you know, and there you go. Now, using my mouse wheel, I'm able to change the sand level of this channel. And at the same time, I can scroll up and down. But this is a personal choice. Let me know which one you prefer. Now for the next one, it's all about macros in Cubase. I'm going to open the key commands window and down in the macro section of uh, this window, we now have a very cool feature called run macro. And this is a very useful little feature that can save you time when creating macros. Because usually what we had to do uh, to test a macro out, once you have like a macro created, you needed to close that window and then go and apply your macro uh, by pressing on the correct shortcut assigned to that macro and test it out this way. But now we can do everything from the key commands window by just clicking on this run macro. So what I'm going to do now, uh, I have the manual, the ESSER, which is going to be useful for me. It's a macro I created to, uh, to select a audio event, like a part of an audio event. And that selection is going to be brought down by a, I think it's six dBs or something. So I kind of use that when I have like lots of sibilance that I can manually tame down, okay? Or breaths and stuff like that, you know? So let's say I want to bring down this little guy here. So I'm going to select it and then I'm going to test my macro to make sure the macro actually works. So I'm going to click on run macro and there you go. Now this selection has been brought down exactly like uh, the way I created my macro. So there you go, very useful little tool that can save you lots of time. The ability to rename a marker as you create it, okay? Uh, so I have like my marker track right on top, I'm gonna select it and I'm gonna select my draw tool in Cubase. And from this point, I'm gonna be able to create uh, some markers on the click location. That's simple, okay? But now we have a modifier on this tool uh, that is the shift key. So by pressing the shift key, if I create a marker again, now I'll be able to write down a name on that marker, which is pretty cool. So I can label the markers as I create them, which is quite useful, all right? Oh, I can do the same also with the cycle marker. So I'm going to keep my, uh, my draw tool selected and I'm going to click at the same time on command if I'm on Mac and if you're on Windows, it's going to be control and I'll be able to create a cycle marker. But again, I can use the modifier to label that cycle marker on the fly, okay? So doing the same thing, command plus shift and there you go, I drag that up and I can name that cycle marker right away. Pretty practical, okay? So this is with the modifier key that is shift. And this is if you have your draw tool selected. Now by clicking on command or control without having the draw tool selected, it will give you the draw tool ability right away. So by keeping my finger on command, I'm gonna be able to do the same on top of pressing on the shift key and write a label on the fly. Okay, same thing without having the draw tool selected by just using the command shortcut, okay? To activate the draw tool for 
cycle marker. Now for the regular marker to activate the draw tool, if you don't have it activated already, you click on Alt if you're on Windows or Option on Mac. And there you go, you'll be able to uh, to write down some markers right away. But the modifier, the shift modifier on Windows seems to work. On Macs, for this one, so far, it doesn't seem to work for some reason. Probably just a little bug that will be fixed in the future update of Cubase 13. Because right now, if I click on my uh, option key, and the modifier on top of that, the draw tool will be deactivated, okay? Instead of giving me the ability to label uh, the marker as I create it, okay? Uh, let me know down below. If you're using a Mac, try this out. Let me know down below if that works on your side or not. And same if you're using Windows, you can let me know down below if the shift modifier works on your side. Since I released my course, The Ultimate Guide to Cubase, I updated the course every time a new version of Cubase came out by adding videos to cover that new version of Cubase. And I just did the same with Cubase 13. So there's some new videos added on The Ultimate Guide to Cubase that covers the new features of Cubase in detail. And by watching this video, you also have access to a 15% off discount code listed in the description below. So don't miss this out. Okay, back to the video. Okay, for the next tip, uh, you can rename an audio event by only selecting that event, right clicking, and then rename selected events. And this is new to Cubase 13. Just a little feature that can be very useful. So let me write this one down. Click on OK. Now, if you have Cubase set up the way I have it, right now I have the uh, event name at the beginning, and I also have in parentheses the original file name of that vocal recording, okay? When both are the same, it's canceled itself out and you only see one name on those events. But that can visually be pretty annoying at some point if you name different events with different names, you know, that are on the same track. So to uh, turn that around, and this little tweak is also available on older versions of Cubase, okay, just so you know. So I'm gonna go back to the uh, Cubase preferences and under event display, I'm gonna click on on audio and then I'm going to uncheck the append clip name to event name. I'm going to click on OK. Now the only label showing up on an audio event is going to be the event's name and that's it. Okay, So even if you change the name and changing the name of an event can be done on an audio event and on a MIDI event also. Now in Cubase 13 we have way more options when it comes to routing channels. Okay, let me show you. And you probably saw that on other videos. I actually talked about that in my Cubase 13 video where I was able to use this new routing thing in Cubase to feed the signal to the Cubase vocoder and create a very nice vocal effect. If you want to watch how to do this, I'm going to encourage you to watch the Cubase 13 video that I posted just a few weeks ago. I'm going to leave the link on top. Okay, now what I can do with this routing feature that we have in Cubase 13 is to record the sound coming out of the virtual instrument straight on a track, okay, in a nick of time. So I have like these chords uh, played from a virtual instrument. All right, so let's say I want to record this straight into audio, or I want to play that part through the virtual instrument, but record everything in audio instead of MIDI or doing both at the same time, very, very simple. Okay, I'm gonna create a track and I'm gonna create a stereo track because my virtual instrument is a stereo instrument. And for the audio inputs, I'm gonna select the connect to bus and that will give me a bunch of options and uh, the track instruments is one of them. So now uh, I can select the virtual instruments I'm using and uh, let's go and put the, uh, the output to master that doesn't matter much. And uh, let's write down synth recording and add track. The only thing I need to do now is to record ready this channel. And that's it, start recording. That's simple, okay? And let me show you another example that I can do with this. And it's not gonna be MIDI related. Okay, so I have a drum bus right here. All 
All right, so what I'm going to do here is to add uh, some uh, saturation on the full drum box. So I have this effects channel track. Now on this channel track, I have inserted a hardware effects, uh, which is linked to the Warm Audio WA to MPX that I made a video on a few months ago. So I'm going to leave the link on top and down below if you want to go watch it. But I'm going to use this box to add some saturation to the drum sound and pretty aggressive saturation. And we'll see how that's going to go. Okay, so let's try this out. Okay, so same thing. If I want to commit to that sound right away, I can record the sound on its own audio channel, okay? So I'm going to create an audio track, keep it stereo. Uh, I'm going to output this one to my mix drums, call it sat drums. Now for the input, I forgot to set up the input, so let's do it right away into routing. And the input, let me select this time an effects channel, which is going to be my 2MPX effects channel track. And that's it. The only thing I need to do is to record ready this, uh, this channel and start recording. Perfect. All right, so let's have a listen to this one. So, you know, this type of routing ability helps a lot to speed my workflow when working with analog gear, especially when I want to commit right away to a sound and use that unit on something else, okay? So this is how you can do it in Cubase 13. If we go back to the mix console, and I'm gonna open the channel strip rack right here, okay? Uh, right now in Cubase 13, when we click on a, a module part of that, uh, the channel strip, we have a pop-up window of that effect, okay? Which is quite nice, and I kind of like it this way. I don't think I'm gonna change that. But if you wanna tweak that up, what you can do is to right-click on the strip tab, and down you will see show strip modules as pop-up modules, or you can choose strip modules or strip modules exclusive. And that will bring the channel strip part of the mix console a bit more like a console look, like it was in older versions of Cubase. Okay, so if you click on these, they will fold up and there you go. So. You know, that can be practical for some. I kind of like it when the modules pop out, but that is a personal choice. And, and this is how you can do it if you want to reverse that to the old ways, okay? And there's also something that you probably know by now, but when you go on the top right and you click on the setup window layout, this is where you can activate or deactivate sections of the racks part of the mix console. But you can also right click on any of the racks tabs and uh, click on setup sections. And that will do the same. And on top of that, you will be able to change the order of those sections. Okay, so let's say I wanna have the, uh, the hardware, you know, a bit lower in the list. I'm gonna bring it down the inserts. Let's bring that one up, followed by the sands. And there you go. So that is a way I can rearrange the layout of the racks within the mix console in a very easy way, okay? So there you go, my friend. Those are the little tips, little features, little tweaks you can do in Cubase 13 to speed up your workflow or to customize Cubase to your taste. Let me know down below what is your favorite Cubase 13 feature and the one you would like me to make a video on. Until next time, take care and see you.